Okay, so we are great. recording this. If you need the link when you drop off, great. There's no real time. I mean, we just kind of keep it uh, fairly light, informative, friendly, uh, kind of an open forum. And I'll just start uh, talking. It's 10 o'clock if other people join us. So good morning and welcome. Uh, and so, yeah, we started this now. I can't even remember how long it's been. March. Um, and we started March. Right on. And Ralph's, Ralph's on. Ralph's the director of Title Toolbox. So he'll tell you. We started in March. Originally, we were going to do this for, um, you know, some one on, 101 type level training. You know, like here's how you do farming. Uh, here's how you save stuff, whatever. We kind of ran out of topics in a way, uh, kind of. So then COVID hit, and our business has been booming because everyone's trying to reinvent themselves, trying to stay motivated, um, and they need data to do it. So uh, that's where we've been this year. And Ralph will tell you, you know, back before COVID, we were spending, you know, four hours a day driving. Uh, that's not the case. So we're a lot more busier, a lot more effective doing, you know, Zoom screen shares. But even now, like today, it's difficult to get the meetings. We're just, you know, everyone's busy. And it's like you end one Zoom and you hop right into the next Zoom. So we kind of put this now, I call it Title Toolbox Tuesdays. Uh, it's bi-weekly. It's open. Uh, we, uh, of course, have a lot of different title companies on this presentation. And you're all our customers. So we treat everyone equal. And we've had some people on, like a couple of weeks ago, we had Astrid Ashworth from Corinthian on. We are open. If someone wants to come on, title rep, lender, agent, and share their current you know, business uh, techniques, how they're surviving, that's what this is really more what this has turned into. Is like it's more of a community um, concept now, where you know we're all in this together. God knows how long we're going to be like this. My feeling is it's still a long way, so we're going to keep doing this. Uh, well worth turning it, uh, tuning into. So today, there's three things I want to talk about, and Ralph, uh, you can always hop in anytime. So the three things are. Uh, net sheets, that's what we advertise. We're going to touch on them briefly. We're going to touch on weekly updates first. And then uh, we have a surprise announcement that we weren't really planning on rolling out today. It is right out there in plain sight on our websites, but we're going to do a, 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 a pre-introduction, if you will. So the 30 or so people on this call are going to have a uh, uh, a good preview of something that we think is going to be incredibly popular. So number one, uh, like I alluded to, we treat all title companies equal. That's number one. You may or may not be aware of this. When someone in uh, your end user, the lender, the agent, when they have state farms, every week they're receiving weekly updates. Uh, and is that still the case, Ralph, right? They're receiving yes. weekly updates or not? That okay. is correct. The weekly updates for some, I'm just saying some, have been kind of a sore spot because they will kind of like we play catch up at some points, like our system might have a, uh, need to get caught up. They might get a lot of emails. I get it. They don't want to get a lot of emails. They're going to, you know, contact the title rep. Hey, I'm getting all these emails. What's this all about? So if you have a farm in our system, we're going to log in here. Every week, you're going to get an update if there's two things that go on. One is new loan activity or two, a title transfer. And it's going to say, I'm sorry, I don't have an example. I should have, but I don't. It will have the title rep's picture on the update. So if you're a title rep, you go to my account, and there's a place for your picture here. 
you want to put your picture in there, it should be 200 pixels by 200 pixels. That photo is going to be on those weekly updates. So you know, I'm just going to pick on a title rep here uh, at random. Lucy uh, is my title rep. Then I'm going to have her picture on that update. <clears throat> and as an agent or a lender, I'm thinking, wow, Lucy's really keeping an eye out for my farms, which we are on Lucy's behalf with her picture. So the, the thing is, the end users didn't like getting these emails. The value is this. If someone refis in a neighborhood, your farm, your lender farm, what's the first thing that neighbor does? He goes out and he brags about, wow, I got a great rate. I just refi. I'm saving, you know, $300 a month to his neighbor, right? Great advertisement for the lender that captured that deal. Well, there's other people farming in my area. I wasn't that fortunate lender, but I'm going to market to those nearby neighbors. This guy that just closed the loan, closed the loan, is always going to uh, do the advertising. I'm going to go out and coattail on that to market to nearby neighbors. Same way when it's an agent. Here's a listing, a title transfer, it closed. I'm going to market to those nearby neighbors. That wasn't my listing, or even if it was, I'm certainly marketing the nearby neighbors. You know how neighbors are. The minute the new neighbor moves in and they get a little friendly, you know what they ask. You know how neighbors are. Hey, what, if you don't mind me asking, what did you end up paying for your house? Right? They, some people will ask you that. What they're really asking, in my opinion, is what do you think my house is worth? Right? What do you think my house is worth? So if I'm an agent and I had a, a good uh, closing with that property owner, I'm marketing the nearby neighbors. If I'm not that agent, then someone captured that business, I'm marketing the nearby neighbors. So the takeaway is if someone complains to you or you're a title rep and someone says, hey, I've had enough of these uh, weekly updates, build that value in there because it will lead to more opportunities for them to close like business. Okay. So Ralph, anything to say about updates or did I cover that all? Yeah. They're designed to uh, kind of warn you that something of a title change is going on with one of the addresses that your farm, that one farm in question is there's some kind of a title change going on, which is should be important to a realtor. So we send them to the realtor and we send them to the title rep connected to the realtor so that you can be the hero and say, hey, one, two, three Main Street in your uh, water, Watertown Farm is uh, has a title change. So let your customer know, Joe, Joe, Joe Blow, who owns the farm, that there are things going on in the farm. He should know that. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> you should know that that's going on. So um, anyways, so that's the purpose. Okay, we just, and it, it yeah, makes sense yeah, that you we just, know. Yeah, and to me interrupt, but we just kind of got overwhelmed last week by uh, people saying, hey, what's going on? Because we kind of just turned that service back on. So again, if, if you get calls about it, build the value, okay? Build the value. So uh, next up, unless there's questions, and you can always text if I have my uh, chat box open. Next up uh, is NetSheet. So if you have a farm or a property and you could go to a property search and put the address in or you can pull a farm up and any property here I'm interested in and I'm hoping this is a good selection I go to NetSheet so we put a lot of work into our NetSheet and it's a NetSheet that you can save you can print you can edit and one of the great features is we put an estimated value in of the property so like a Zillow estimate, this is our estimate. 
It's through our AVM, Automated Valuation Model. Uh, we think if the house is in uh, good repair, does, and we don't know if it's in good repair, like this house is, looks great. It's uh, got maybe a little age on it, but it looks great, uh, maintained. We don't know. It's a desktop appraisal, but we think if you were going to list this house uh, and close in the next 30 days or so, you could ask, you know, 905 for it. So let me just kind of go off on a small tangent. In our program, the main reason people are using Title Toolbox is we're giving you doors to market to that there's some sort of stressor on, whether it's a divorce, a bankruptcy, a lien. Uh, there's some reason if your life is good and you wake up in the morning, there's no reason to list. But these properties that we pick, there's a reason that you want to approach them either for a refi or a listing opportunity if there's something going on. Typically, financial they have to get out from under somehow, whether it be a refi, cash out the equity, or list and take the equity. So we're showing you, it's a great uh, cheat, if you will, of what we think that houses could list for in today's market. If there's loans, we have the information that would be in here. And if you see more than one loan, as a lender or an agent even, that's a red flag that, you know, they're cashing the equity out on that house just to stay afloat. So, I, again, I took the sample uh, randomly, but if there was more loans on here, that's a red flag. And, again, you can, you know, change the price. Well, so let's say yeah, nine, 905 was a little optimistic. We can list it for 875. I can change the price on that, and it will uh, update all of the costs, the fees. There's three tabs here. Everyone always wants to know, you know, what, what's it come out to? What am I, hence the call net sheet, net sheet. My payments, I'm sure everyone here is familiar with net sheet. So we just wanted to kind of go back over the net sheet a little bit, just touch on it. That is a great net sheet. So please start using it a little bit, push the uh, value on the net sheet that we put in there yeah go ahead question yeah hey, i was I, just on the other topic of the updates after they upload sure. their um spreadsheet uh can that feature be turned off at all or no uh no okay yes i just no. was curious okay right and so uh, the, the and answer really the, the answer really is no that's the, that's the real answer Okay. It can be turned off, but right now it's not turned off on a per rep or per agent basis. It would have to be for the whole title company. Gotcha. And then another question, maybe a little off track here, is if um, if I that's have a spreadsheet that I've been working here on. For. <laughs> right. If I have a spreadsheet, uh, one of my clients has a spreadsheet that he wants to upload. It's it's a pretty significant one, right. like 3,500 names or something like that. At least right. it is. Right on. And, uh, he obviously wants to get updated and then he wants to purchase emails right and on. phone numbers. Can he right. do that with his spreadsheet that he uploads to the system? Yes. So okay. I'm going to close the net sheet. So a couple things here and we can do a, a training if you need it, but we might not need to. In our system, everyone has preset limits on how large the farms can be, how many exports they can do, things like that. So the first thing you need to do before you get back to your user is go into your account and go into admin and you would find that user. Let's call them, you know, whoever. Let's just call them. But let's let it come up here a second. All right. So let's just say uh, Daniel Oliver at random is my user. First thing, you hit the drop down gear, view edit limits. So, what was mentioned was 3,500 properties. So, if you see his limits here, he does have 10,000 records per farm. Cool, that'll work. He can export only 2,500. So, if he put that 3,500 farm in, and I'll talk about the upload process in a minute, but if he had 3,500 properties, he can only export 2,500. So he's going to not 
uh, be without a thousand. So you can go in and you can increase that uh, up to 10,000. So you just put the value in and then just hit update. Okay. Just submit an update. Okay. So that's the, what you need to do is to make gotcha. sure that he has the uh, credit, the limit set. So now, okay. as far as the upload, as a title rep, and I, I, this is stuff we've talked about. One of the things you can do to build your business and value to an agent or a lender is to upload their file. They can do it themselves or you can do it, okay? You can do it or they can do it, okay? And that way, you're right. They can go in and buy phone numbers and emails. They can go in and see, you know, all the life event data in their farm. Again, you're giving them this great tool. They already have a farm. You could recreate that farm by a boundary search, radius search. You can do it that way. If they want to upload it, cool. You get the full farm, the 3,500 properties. So if you go to uh, YouTube and you type in Benutech, Hold on a minute, guys. Let me get back. You type in Benutech, and this icon right here, it looks like the James Bond icon. I get this question a lot. How do I upload farms? So two or three weeks ago, right here, there's a full video on how to upload farms. It only takes you two minutes to upload a farm. The biggest deal is formatting the spreadsheet. So it takes me, like I said, this is 47 minutes. It takes a half hour to explain it. It only takes you two minutes to do it. So there's a great spreadsheet right there. If you want to go in, take a look at that, take some notes, and then all you need is for your client to uh, send you over the spreadsheet and you can upload it. Okay? So this YouTube channel is a killer channel if you go in the home and you just hit videos, all our videos yeah, come up. That's great. You yeah. know, I've been taught to uh, have the a, the a, the agent kind of uh, do the upload and kind of walk them through it. But I think the, I like the idea of uploading it for the client, let them not re, you know realize that there's no magic, that there's some magic going on that I just hooked them up. So I think I like that idea. Well, uh, I say, you know, like if you have the time and you can do it, uh, they're going to appreciate it. You can certainly teach them how to do it, but they're probably not going to. Your farm team can do it. You know, if uh, the farm team wants to upload it, they can send it directly to the farm team and put it in their account. So no matter how it gets uploaded, then once they, they just go to home and they're going to get an automatic email from us, which might go into the spam folder. So what I say is, you know, hey, let me upload your farm and then let's hop on to a Zoom and talk about it. So you just go into farming, down the farms, farming, farms, and save farms right here, and all your save farms come up. So then you just select the farm and you pull it up, and then you're able to go through and uh, – I don't think I have a farm I really uploaded here. Like here's one uh, nearby neighbors, 250. If I just select the farm, then you can go in and see what's going on. You know, how many deaths, divorces, bankruptcies, things like that. And on that YouTube channel, there's a lot of videos up there fairly recently on uh, strategy for out-of-state owners, things like that. All right, good question. Other questions? All right, so we have an announcement to make. Ralph, you've got the opportunity to make the announcement if you'd like. Right, we've added a real cool feature that has been asked for several times uh, in the last year. It's a wallet. So if you guys are buying leads or phone or emails, you can now have sort of a bank uh, in your account waiting to be spent. And that way there, you don't have to always put in. Who did that? I did. I'm, you're on my site. Oh, this oh. is our test site. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, <laughs> that caught Ralph's eye. Three hundred. Yeah, as soon as I saw it, three hundred ninety-five bucks. <laughs> That's good. So you so, can put, you right, can have so, money in the bank. <laughs> if you put in say fifty bucks, it would show under current balance. And when you go uh, buy credit now, you can add. Uh, and then when you go out to check out, whatever you purchased will be, of course, deducted from your wallet. And that right, right. avoids the constant uh, putting in your credit card all the time. Right, because uh, FYI, you know, we've had a few questions. We don't store credit card numbers. So they're not certainly on board here or in the server. So you always have to keep putting your credit card in. And the way the system's uh, built is if I wanted divorces, bankruptcies, and say uh, probates, I have to do them one at a time, and that still hasn't changed. So if I do a search, you know, Premier Data, uh, and then if I go into, uh, let me just take take you through it quickly here. Let me just take, let me just show you what I'm talking about. I think you probably all know that. But if I pull up a farm here. I'll tell you, the internet is slow these days. There's quite a bit of farms in this uh, this site here. All right, so if I pull up a farm here, uh, let's get out of here. This farm here is a small farm, select. So I have a farm, whether I saved it or not, and I go to Premier Data. And then if I wanted under leads, if I want to say divorces or affidavits of death, I have to do those one at a time. If I put more in, like what you're asking the program now is to find properties that have both a death and a divorce, which someone could have some incredibly bad luck, if you will, but the count will probably be zero on that because you know I have to do one at a time. So. If I just did affidavits of death, probably not going to have anything here. We'll see. We'll see. You put if them both anything. together. That's one way to avoid the divorce. That's for sure. Right. Right. Also, uh, <laughs> so let's see. I, I probably will get a zero count. Yeah, I figured I'd get a zero count here. But if I had a count, you would just because it's a small farm. That's all. So if I, I would check out. So my point is. Let's let's make this right here, guys. Let's do this right here. Clear search. Let's do it right here. We have a couple of minutes, right? No one's in a big rush this morning. Uh, hey, can I, while you're doing that, can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So, so, okay, so say I create a spreadsheet and I got like, you know, 500 people and in that list of 500, I want to go through and get all the emails and phone numbers. So I go to right. set that up. Is it still set up where you don't know exact, like it'll charge you? Yes, yes. It, it charges you like for 75% of them and then whatever they get you, they just reimburse you the difference? No, that's different now. Uh, we changed that. Hold on a second here. Okay. Like that, that gentleman who's uh, got that 3,500, that's, he's trying to go for emails and phone numbers. So what we're trying to do is, uh, since I haven't done that yet with a client, I want to know what's, you know, what he's going to expect for, you know, he might just so start with a uh, thousand right off the bat. Right. So that's kind of a uh, lengthy answer to that question. So I can answer it while uh, you're doing your search if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Ralph. But I was going to mention list services as well. And uh, so, yeah, go ahead. So here's the disclaimer on the thing. But go ahead, Ralph, please. Right. So that's the explanation. They're going to, you got to remember, it's like when you go into a hotel and they ask you for your credit card 
for charges that get charged to the room, if that is that type of hotel you're in, um, it's going to put a hold. Wait a minute. What kind of hotel do you go to? <laughs> for the for the whole amount. So if you have a thirty five hundred, it's going to charge you for thirty five hundred times five cents for phones, and thirty five hundred for times seven cents for uh, the email match, but it's ne never going to take that money out of your account. It just wants to know that you have room just in case all of the 3,500 have a phone match. Gotcha. That's how okay. that works. They don't right. actually- And we're telling you- Yeah. Right. Right. They don't take- We're telling you we're going to match 75% of them. That, that's so just a guesstimate. Is it kind of like a hold, right. maybe? Is it it's a, a hold. hold or is it a check? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Well, that's good to so, know. That's a good right. way to explain right. it then to my client. Perfect. So, but here's a scenario. In this case, you're uploading the farm. So there's no cost for those records. They're just assessor records. And your client will be happy if we match 75%. On 3,500, that's a pretty significant capture rate. That's a yeah. lot of uh, phone numbers. If, on the other hand, you're showing the program to someone, I want, say, all of the deaths or the liens in a certain city, say, it's, or loan information. I want all the FHA loans or conventional loans in a zip code or a city. That's a huge number. Could be 2,000, 5,000 records. But I want phone numbers, and or emails. So if you think about it, what your client really wants is a property that has a loan, a death or a lien, whatever we select, and it has to have a phone number. Well, we're telling you right in front of here that you're only going to get 75% phone numbers, 35% emails. So if that's the case, and I'm your client, and I bought, say, 10,000 loan records for the city of Glendale or wherever, and I go into my account and I've only got uh, 3,000 emails, then someone's got some explaining to do, right? Oh man, I wanted all emails. I'm, you know, I, I do email campaigns. I spent, you know, for 7,000 loan records at five cents a piece, I can't get emails for. Then we get into this whole thing about you know, we're going to refund it, so on and so forth. So in the example this gentleman mentioned about uploading the farm, all he has is just regular assessor records. There's no cost. But when people start to buy records, it costs money, and they expect a 100% match on their phones or emails. That's not happening. So we offer list services to Ralph, Brian, or Matt, depending on who the title company is. And you can email me or if you have Ralph, Matt, or Brian's email, and you can either do it yourself or directly for your client and be specific. I want single family homes in whatever zip code or city. And I want uh, must have phone numbers, must have phone numbers. We can get a count, a cost, take the credit card information, provide the list. Okay. And I will say this. If you have a list and it has phones and emails on it, if you upload that list into a farm like we were talking about, that list is not going to carry those phone numbers and emails up. Okay? That's clear to everyone, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So just want to kind of put that out there. So going back to if I wanted to check out here, I so wait check a out let me just ask and, you. So yeah, go ahead. So uh, uh, so it's not going to carry the phone numbers and emails out. Uh, and maybe you know, I again, I'm I'm kind of newer to this program. I know you can use Deluxe, but does this program actually have a email campaign tool to go out to the consumer? No. Okay, so, so that's okay. So you just have to keep a separate uh, spreadsheet then. 
That's cool. It, it would be all through exporting. Well, yeah. I, I can't say that. Hold on. Let me correct what I just said. Uh, we, since you mentioned Deluxe, we work with Deluxe Printing. We work with Go Big, and we work uh, a lot with uh, Corfac. So in our program, on board, we do have an upload to Corfac. So if you have a Corfac account, you can plug it in. That's not our company, but yeah. they've been a partner of ours for a long time. We don't have Go Big or Deluxe in Title Toolbox. Right, Ralph? Yes. So it's interesting that the phone numbers and the emails on the spreadsheet wouldn't get uploaded. Is there any way to change that on our side? I mean, I know it's on your side, it's different, but, or is that just not an option? Not an option. Not an option. Not a, okay. So unless if someone said to you, hey, I have a book of business, here's 300 properties that I handled over the last 10 years of my real estate career. And it's a nice spreadsheet, you know, and it's very diligent. It has emails, phone numbers. You can upload that, no problem. Uh, and if you look at my video on how to upload, we only need three columns, APN, site, zip, site, address. Uh, so you could put phone numbers in there. They're not going to get uploaded. They're not going to get uploaded. So you could buy them new again. Maybe we capture, again, 75% or not. It's, I hate to say it this way, but it's... I think it's better to have that knowledge so, you know, to uh, avoid any uh, type of, uh, of uh, disappointment for your end user, really. You have the knowledge on how this works, so you can set the expectation. Yeah, absolutely. It makes complete sense. Um, right. All right. This is a weird random question, but say if you purchase now on your spreadsheet, the emails and phone numbers. And so now suddenly there's a, a row that shows, you know, 20 of them with emails and phone numbers and the other say 20 not. Can you actually input, can you type in an email and phone number once that is created on your spreadsheet and the system? On a spreadsheet, sure. Yeah, because when you export it, it's going to be just a spreadsheet. So any Excel function you can do you can do oh. on that. It's just, you're just exporting it into a CSV. Okay. Okay. And yep. that's a really lot, that's gonna be a really big spreadsheet, by the way. Yeah. So way over to the right, way over to the right would be phones and emails. So you might wanna delete some of those columns. Like, I mean, some people yep. might not need uh, the ID number we use or whatever, right? Yeah, right. Gotcha. Yep. Thanks for all this info, man. It's great stuff. And, and that's all on that video. Cause I, I had these questions so many times that Again, we did that video on Excel basics and how to upload. So that's a really good video. And I'll give a pitch to our app video. I get We get a lot of questions. Brian Fox did a really good video on the app. So these three are fairly recent. You want to really give them a look, those three. Okay. And again, the wallet, I'm telling you right now, that's a slick, slick feature put $50 in, like when I go to Starbucks, you know, I put 20 bucks in and uh, worked great. And we kind of modeled it after that, just, you know, buy your credit, put in your money, $50 or whatever. We'll, we've got a couple of things we're working on. That's why we, this is kind of like a unofficial uh, release of this today is if you notice here right now, I can't put in $10. It's red. I can put in $50. So we're going to lower that minimum to $10. Okay. Cause to, uh, believe it or not, to some people, $50 is a lot of money to spend on data. So uh, to, we're going to have an official release coming up here in a couple of weeks. But so right now they are relegated to at least $50. So that's one. And two, if there should be a need for, a credit if there should be i just backed out here a little bit this email address right here ttb help at benutech.com monday through friday nine to five west coast time for support you need a refund a receipt for data the website's a little wonky whatever you need send us an email a screen capture image goes a long way. So really the 
the uh, wallet, if you will, works great. It's just we need to just do a couple small tweaks. So it's, it's ready to go. You want to put $400 in? Go for it. Other questions? Ralph, questions, yes. comments? No, um, I would say, to, as I've said many times, I've, I'm a veteran in this business. I've been in it for 40 years. This is definitely the most complete uh, tool that I ever used. And I think there's a lot to be said for learning it in piecemeal. Don't try to learn it all at once. It's, there's too much. Learn farming, learn the pay portal tool, because that will help you get uh, business for your clients, which in turn give you business. My tip would be learn farming first, obviously learn how to pull a profile and notices, uh, we notice the differences between us and our competitors, uh, how we uh, pass out the data, how we pinpoint special farms. Uh, there's a lot to learn. So take it in piecemeal and stay on it because you'll lose some of the easy ways to, to pull it. And then it becomes a, a, a difficult and it's not, it's not that difficult. So you just got to learn it in piecemeal. And uh, I'm here for you if you want to have me on a call. You know, we can do a, a Zoom conference. And I can give, you know, the quick and easy, how to find the exact doors, things like that. Just send us an email. So really, we listen to everyone's comments. And this is one of the things, and it took us a, quite a while to develop it. And we have other things coming. So, so that's it for today. Unless someone has other questions or comments. And thank you, Ralph. Uh I, I have a comment. Uh, there's a gentleman on this call that's a brandy new title rep, Mike Beecham. I want to welcome him to the Title Two Back Toolbox Club. And Jim, he's going to hook with you for one-on-one -on -one training. Yep. I'll set sure. it up. Sure. Hi, Larry. Very good. Christian. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Good, sir. How you be? Good, good. Good to hear your voice. Yes, same here. So I think All right, so we have uh, another one coming in a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll send out the uh, email on that. The newsletter is still going. And again, if anyone wants to hop on, it's uh, pretty much an open forum. And we hope everyone is doing well and, and staying sane, right? Safe and sane. Stay vertical. Right. All You're right, guys. Welcome, thank you. Thank, thank you. you, guys. Thank you, guys. Take care.